Well, that obviously did not work. So I've got a busted tank. Well, had. I had a busted tank, but immediately after that whole fiasco, I threw that thing in the garbage. I haven't even had that Jobo tank, but for like a month. My Patterson tank, I have had for like five years, and I don't even know why. I thought I would try something new. Looks like when I put the lid on the Jobo tank, like the seal it and light seal it, it wasn't completely lined up right. Didn't realize it until I went to invert my tank when I was developing, and then developer came out. I took the tank into the bathroom, pitch black, knowing though that any light that may be coming in the bottom of the bathroom door would get in this tank, and I would have a little bit of a light leak. But I tried to get it back on, couldn't do it. So I took it back to the sink and I put the developer, the rest of the developer in and I just sloshed it around for three and a half minutes, poured it out, put the bleach and bleach bypass in, sloshed it around, couldn't invert it for eight minutes. And yeah, I got some photos. I mean, they definitely have an interesting look, but they're not what I intended to shoot. I went out there to shoot film across the coast and yeah i mean i got some film shots but they're really grungy they have light leaks they honestly look really bad but i guess we can say bad is subjective because you might think they're cool in fact i've shown a few people and they're like wow these are really cool they're not what i intended at all but here's the lesson this is my own practice when i go out with my leica m6 I typically am going to shoot something with my Leica M10R as well. I would love to get to the point where I am so confident and feel so good about film photography that I won't miss anything, but I am just not there. Mostly because I do it all. I shoot, I develop at home, I scan, and sometimes I'm like, ugh, it's not really what I intended. And maybe that's a skill problem, maybe that's an experience problem, or just a confidence problem. But regardless, I'm very grateful right now that I at least shot some stuff as well on my M10R. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take a selection of shots that I took on my M10R digitally and edit them in a filmic style. So while we're not gonna try to recreate Goal 200 in a preset today, we are gonna do some things that help photos that are digital look a little more filmic and not just by like cranking the grain up. I'm gonna walk you through a few of these and what I would do to make it look a little more filmic and hopefully you'll get something out of this video when it comes to editing. So we were out there before the sun came up to shoot blue hour and I don't think conditions could have been any better. And the first thing I like to do when I'm trying to edit in a filmic style is to increase contrast. But I don't do it with the slider, I do it on the curve. And so I'm just gonna grab this point here and this point and just slope them a little bit. I'm gonna copy that across all three channels and already you can see the difference between the flat and then what we just did. And if I feel like it's too much, I'll just smoke this contrast fader back down. But we're not gonna mess with that just yet. I also think on a photo like this where the shadows I want to be warm and the highlights I want to be cool, I might take this and pull it into the gold just a touch more than I have on the other channels. Maybe push those highlights a touch more blue. We might revisit this. But now you can kind of see the before and the after. Tell you what we're gonna do, we're just gonna crop in a little bit to just get rid of some of that vignetting for now. So already we've gone from that to this. Now to get kind of the filmic touches, we're gonna to come down to our color mixer. Film typically has a little bit more of a teal in its blues. Well, it depends on the film you're working with, but the films that I use typically are a touch more teal and definitely a little more saturated. And then that is, that blue is going to be like our main color here. Uh, I'm going to actually push these highlights just a touch. I don't think I'm going to do anything with the shadows. I, I might pull the shadows some. Going to pull these blacks a little bit as well. Going to lower the contrast a bit for now. We're going to leave that part of the curve alone for right now. I'm going to bring some saturation up. Going to leave the calibration alone. Here's where we're going to really start pushing the film look. I'm going to bring this clarity down to like negative 20 because it's it's way too sharp. I can already tell that. I'm also gonna bring this down to like 25. Just try to soften it up a little bit. My settings here are uh, at ISO 800, so we've got a little bit of noise already happening there. God, I love the like a noise. It's like, just looks so nice already. But 
we're going to push the grain a little bit. A good grain setting I have found is like around 20 for like fine grain and I put this at 30 and typically that looks pretty nice, very sandy looking grain. If I wanted to maybe increase the size of that grain, maybe if, if it was a true like 800 ISO, it would have a little more grain there. So maybe we'll take it up to 50. Yeah, that's not looking bad. I honestly think I could come in here and like little dehaze and make it even more foggy, which I think looks nice. Uh, I always love to, this has nothing to do with the film part, but I always love to take the gradient at the bottom and just pull my eyes up a little bit. But already, like, we are a little more in the style of film. And all we did was we added color contrast on the RGB channels. We've tweaked our blues a little bit, and then we've just cranked down clarity. And what you'll see a lot of times is like when you crank down the clarity, you get a bit of a glow on the borders. See the borders of the rock? It's sort of like using a ProMist filter. Film has really smooth transitions around highlights where digital is like a lot of stark lines. And so cranking that clarity down lets you introduce what seems to look like those smooth transitions. And already, like, I'm digging this. I think it looks nice. If I copy that and put it over here, yeah, I mean, look at this. This is more in the style of what I was going for. I will say the shadows could probably use a little warmth still, so maybe I'll push a little magenta into the shadows. Or honestly, I could even come down here and just saturate those shadows a touch. Maybe warm, make them a little more warmer, not so red, but like maybe 25 here. I might even pull the luminance down a little bit just to get better of a look. And now that I'm doing these things, I'm actually going to come over here to this, to our light contrast curve here, and I'm going to fade the bottom end to touch. I think that right there looks pretty freaking close to what I was intending. And that's really the point here is like, what did I have in mind when I took my M6 out to go shoot? I had these kinds of shots, like this look, I, I'm really digging this look right here. I'm gonna copy this and bring it back over to this one now. Made a couple more changes in that. And that is what I was intending. That looks the part. Let's take it here. So I, we're on the beach, we're standing at the lifeguard stand, and then I see a truck in the distance. Let me paste this edit on it and make any tweaks. I mean, right there. Do you see how like, you don't need to do a thousand things to get your desired effect. I feel like I have my desired effect just in this really quick color grade. I think what I'm also gonna do here just for just for fun is I'm gonna come in here and just actually bring the haze down and just haze it out and then warm it up. You get a little bit of that effect. It's very subtle. And of course you see these, this vignetting is crazy. Let's pull it down a little bit, center this guy. But already, like, this is the look I was intending to get when I was shooting. So that, that truck comes across the beach. It ended up being a state truck, and they were setting signs up in front of the, the rock here. And, I mean, look at this. This is what I was intending. Let me flip it this way. We'll get this one Instagram ready, right? I mean, that's looking pretty good. I think I would warm this one up just a touch just to make that pop right here. If I come down here to the orange, I can actually saturate that a little more, maybe push it a little in the direction of red and brighten it up a little more as well. I think we're getting a really nice look here. Back to this gradient at the bottom. Don't wanna overdo it, but I mean, look at this. Like, this is really what I was going for in these shots. Let's continue on and bring this same edit over. My friend Alfonso took a photo of me with my Q2. Let's paste that on. Let's see how it works. Oh yeah, that looks really awful. Let's fix that white balance. I feel like it's looking the part. It's looking how I intended it. I'm actually really happy how fast this is coming together. But I mean, right there, that is very much in line with the colors and the look that I intended. And again, we didn't do a lot of crazy stuff. We just added some point curves on the RGB channels and we pulled a little more warmth and pushed a little more cool tones on the blue channel. We've increased saturation. We've done a very little color tweaks. We've added a touch of warmth to the shadows. And then really that film look is coming from smoking down that clarity. I mean, I'm at negative 35 on the clarity and getting the grain kind of like where I want it for the look that I'm using. And I think this looks 
just fantastic. It's nice and soft without being like out of focus and bad. And that looks the part. Here's some houses and the rocks in the background. I mean, you can really see it here. I think though, to make this work, I'm gonna pull the highlights down. But I mean, like you can really see how the clarity being down really fades these transitions on the lines into the highlights. And it looks very filmic and really nice. Let's go into the forest here. This was the Crescent Beach hike. Big old sign at the beginning of it that's like, don't do this hike if you're not an expert hiker. It was fine. Which if it wasn't clear, I do not consider myself an expert hiker. In a, in a photo like this, you know, the clarity being down, there's not like a highlight texture I'm looking for. So it looked really like dreamy and kind of fake. I'm going to bring it back up here. I think for like a wood scene here, I think to, to get that filmic look, I'm probably going to go in and just fade it a touch more, but also like bury the blacks a little more, pull some of that contrast down and maybe pull the photo even. And now I can warm it up just a touch, but also I've got to watch greens. Greens really can get away from you in a filmic look. So here we got a lot of green. I'm gonna desaturate it. I'm actually, for, like if I was going for more of a Fuji look, I'd push the greens towards blue. A Kodak look, I'd push the greens towards yellow. But ultimately I'm gonna desaturate them, push them to yellow and get this kind of look here. And I think this looks really nice. I'm gonna copy this look, bring this over here. Yeah, I mean right there. Great example of what I'm going for. It's very smooth, that clarity being low, very smooth. This is at negative 10, little desaturated. And you can see like, because we've curved it a lot up here, we're getting this really faded look on the sides. I love that look. I think it looks just so good. But right there, I mean, we are in that filmic style. Let's go to this one. I'm gonna bring the exposure down a little bit, bring the contrast up on a photo like this. I find that when there's a lot of texture, I like a lot of contrast. And I might even bring the clarity back up a touch for something like this because this is highly textured, maybe just at like negative five, but I think it looks great for a photo like this. I'm probably just gonna throw a radial around here, invert that radial, and then just like bring the sides down a little bit just to get that eye brought to the middle. Let's do one more, this one on the beach here. And you can see that we've got this really nice, like, let's bring the contrast up a lot on this one. We've got this really nice look here and it didn't take a lot to get it. And that's the point of this video. Like film is expensive. It can be so frustrating when your tank breaks in the middle of a development of two rolls that you just shot. But thank goodness I got some digital and we can edit in the style of film. I've got another video where I go way more into how to edit in a film-like style, but let's just link that one above. I give some principles. I explain a little bit more about film. You can't recreate film, but I'm very happy with what I've done here with this small gallery. There were a few I didn't touch. Not gonna worry about those right now, but I, I do just wanna point out how, as you look at this, like we've got a nice looking gallery here and it would have been so much better to actually have my film shots from this experience. I am grateful that I shot some digital as well of the same things. I hope this video helped you see what you can do with just a few simple principles and simple tweaks to your photos. You really can get that filmic look or at least get it rolling pretty easily in Lightroom. It, it's not overly complicated. So try those things that I showed today and see what they do for your photos. And if you like what you've seen, be sure to check out verygoodpresets.com and you can find my presets on there. But more importantly, you could join the mailing list and be a beta tester whenever I'm beta testing a new preset or get first access to new presets that are coming out. And I already told you, Goal 200 is dropping later this fall and I think it's gonna be just awesome. I've been using the current version of it. I'm very happy with it. It's not quite there yet, but we're getting close. All right, guys, we made it to the end. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.